not a good enough reason to run a bank card. I don't know if you could have ever given me one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt Gross, uh, and uh, I graduated high school here. Corey was a fantastic teacher of mine my senior year. And uh, uh, full disclosure, I do also uh, coach the oral interp team. So that debate room, let's slap some interp on that as well, and let's get that going. I'm all for it. Uh, and I was uh, one of the, I don't know, 2018 people that uh, came around about two and a half years ago. They put out this call uh, a couple of years ago and said, hey, let's, let's get people, concerned citizens, come in. Let's get together. Let's talk over some ideas. and Let's, let's get the ball rolling on a plan. And I'm thrilled to see that we've got significantly more people that showed up here tonight. So thank you to, to everyone. One of the reasons I thought we were going to come here tonight, though, was to try to put forward some issues, set some... Uh, you know, what are our priorities? And I don't think our priorities have changed too terribly much from what we came up with two and a half years ago and the last time we were here. I think number one priority, somebody correct me if I say this wrong, that that group identified, I might mix up one and two. In my mind, special, uh, special education, handicap accessibility, and security. And those haven't gotten brought up here tonight, and I, they're so vitally important to what we're trying to do with this school. Handicap accessibility is such a huge issue in the school that has never been addressed, and so many of these issues that haven't been addressed, you want to know why we've had 60% or plus of our capital outlay tied up for 20-some years now uh, going to the middle school and to the elementary school. So please, let's not go down that road again. Let's not handicap ourselves by tying up money 12 years from now when we get the elementary school paid off with building a high school the same, the same way. Or the worst idea I've heard uh, actually is using, tying up more capital outlay now to try and do things bit by bit. We don't have it. It's a bad idea. Let's throw that one out. Uh, we should not be trying to cap tie up capital outlay money now. We've already got 60% of it locked up for over uh, a decade to come. Jeff, chime in here, uh, our architect friend who unfortunately hasn't had the chance to speak yet. We've heard a lot of uh, some people asking if we could do, you know, maybe identify one thing now, bathrooms now, this now. In their current footprint, if we make these bathrooms handicap accessible, is it really going to be functional? Can it, can it exist in its current footprint, the two bathrooms that we have, if we start knocking things out and try to make them in the footprint they have now, handicap accessible, can that be a realistic option? An open-ended question to you. <laughs> Let's get the architect involved. I think there, there's limited existing facilities, and that's part of the problem because the way the high school sits now, you don't have enough facilities to be code. So to answer your blanket question, can you make what you have now accessible? Yes, uh, at the, at the uh, what's the word, uh, as long as you're willing to lose fixtures that you have. Right. Because, for example, there, on each side of the auditorium, there's bathrooms. But we would end up taking both of those bathrooms to convert it into one accessible bathroom. But then, there again, we just cut fixture counts in half. So it, it's more than just an ADA question. It's, you know, it's number of facilities and where are they and how they're going. Would it be a similar answer if we talked about the locker room situation in its current footprint? If we tried to just, you know, <coughs> Would we be in a somewhat similar situation there? Yeah, locker rooms are very similar. To, to make those accessible and try and keep the programmatic counts that you need, um, you would run into the same thing. We can make them accessible, but at the expense of losing square footage, losing how they function. Library as well? Library is a loaded gun. I mean, everybody in this room knows that um, you have to go down steps to get into the library. Uh, and incidentally, I don't know if you know, but this meeting was changed to this room instead of the library because, you know, you, you play the what ifs. What if we had somebody that, that needed to get in the room? We can't comply. Broader point that I'm getting at. We cannot accept an option. Whatever we come away tonight, whatever plan gets put, in, put into place, fixing one thing next year and something else the next year, and something else the next year, so that we finally get this relatively done 17 years from now is not really an option. If only for academically, and that my kids and Ashley's kids and all the little kids in here deserve better than a, you know some place that's constantly being worked on day after day after day. Let's get the thing done, let's get it done right while we've got the opportunity. I've heard 
People question the domino theory. It isn't a domino theory. We don't have the room to put in what we need right now. If you want to start taking away classrooms, which we're already short of, then we can do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to build some new stuff and you're going to have to do it one time. It needs to happen one time.